So this video is about the bifocals and you have to let the patient choose his frame or her frame according to his face and you will help him accordingly according to his nose according to his anatomy and yes and the frame should be bigger in size so our patient selected his frame so let's adjust the frame first your frame should be well aligned on the patient's face right and now we will take the measurements so the eye level should be the same you and your patient should be at the same level so your patient will look in the right eye and you will mark the left eye of the patient and your patient will look at your left eye and you will mark his right eye and now we will mark the segment height exactly at the level of lower eyelid so this is distance visual point or distance pd or distance pupil mark right this is for left eye this is for the right eye and these dots are exactly the lower lid margins where the segment height will be there and now we will mark like this to reduce any chances of mistakes so this is pupil marks and these are the segment heights so our near portion will be there so our today's topic is about the bifocals we have a detailed video that which kind of bifocal is su suitable for what kind of patients like in hyperopia what kind of or which kind of bifocal is suitable in myopic patient which kind of bifocal is suitable we have a detailed video the link is in the description you can watch if you want this video is about the bifocals the different characteristics different section segment height segment width and about the practical demonstration of the bifocals that how we can make the measurements of a patient to make him or her adjust the bifocals so let's start the video so you know very well about the single vision lenses the single vision lenses are the lenses as name implies that the single vision lenses are made just or only for one distance like if i'm uh, wearing a glasses or spectacles for distance that is my single vision distance glasses and if i'm wearing uh, glasses or spectacles uh, just for reading that is called my reading single vision glasses right or if i am wearing at intermediate distance a specific glasses for just intermediate or my desktop or my laptop right those glasses are called the intermediate single vision glasses right single vision glasses only for one distance right and what are the bifocals as name implies that bifocals bi mean two and focals mean two distances right the spectacles or glasses which are made specifically by or uh, specifically for the two distances like one for the distance and one for the intermediate or for the near right and what about the trifocals trifocals are almost obsolete right so we can discuss a little bit the trifocals are the glasses or spectacles in which we can uh, enjoy three different distances like one for distance or for second one is for intermediate for desktop reading for table reading you can say and the third one is for the near right but another uh, we have another uh, option we have progressive addition lenses as well uh, so the progressive addition lenses also have the three different distances like one for distance for intermediate and for near as well what is the difference between these single vision bifocals trifocals and progressive addition lenses this uh, the difference is very uh, very clear in if you talk about the bifocals right we have a clear sharp distinct line between two between two distances one for the distance and one for the near we have a total a distinct line we have a differentiated line between two these point focus right and if you talk about the trifocals which are totally obsoleted uh, if you talk about the trifocals we have two different sections three different sections actually one for distance intermediate and near and we have two distinct lines in trifocals which it which is a disturbance at its peak 
you can say in trifocals right so that's why those trifocals are obsoleted and now the most innovative things right now is progressive addition lenses right there is no any distinct line there is no any separated line there is no any differentiated line in the progressive addition lenses right and we can enjoy the distance we can enjoy the intermediate we can enjoy the reading as well three different distances in just a single lens and without any distinct line or sharp line or differentiated line or any border line right so these are a uh, uh, you can say a minute introduction about single vision lenses bifocal lenses trifocal lenses and progressive addition lenses so in this video specifically we will discuss about different types of bifocals their functions their usage their segment heights their segment widths and their measurements so we have different types of bifocals like we have uh, split bifocals which are invented by uh, the benjamin franklin right we have fused bifocals but these types of bifocals are obsolete now they were used in old centuries but right now the most modern type of bifocals are the solid bifocals the solid bifocals are also called the one piece bifocal right so we in solid bifocals we are we are not going to attach two different sections of the glasses right there is a one single uh, piece of a lens with the same refractive index on both sides for the distance and for the near as well the same refractive index but in old type of bifocals light like infused bifocals we have to attach two different lenses or two of different refractive index to make the bifocals right we use uh, you can say the crown glass for the distance which have uh, the low refractive index and we use uh, at uh, for the near as flint glass which is which has the high refractive index right but they are not going to use in this modern age right now we are using the solid bifocals the one piece bifocals right and every type of plastic bifocals which we are we, which we are using in this age in this modern age are called the solid bifocals so we have different names of the bifocals so first of all we have d shaped bifocals it is also called cryptok k r y p t o k the crypto bifocals and crypto bifocals is actually this is a blank or t shaped bifocal sorry this is not d shaped this is circular bifocal circular bifocal is also called cryptok so we have our bifocals like this a circular type of bifocals right so this is cryptok or circular bifocals right so we have another bifocal another type of bifocal which is flat top d right and it is also called d bifocals right and the shape is like in this position the d is standing like this but it is flat top d right so flat top d means the d is flat like this the flat portion of the d is at top so that's why it is called flat top d so this is the shape of the ftd or flat top d or d shaped bifocals the next one is executive or you can say executive bifocal as well different authors pronounce differently so executive bifocals so this is called the executive bifocals this is the shape of the executive bifocals and now we will learn about the different functions or indications of the circular or crypto bifocals d shaped bifocals or flat top d or executive bifocals first we will discuss that the circular bifocals what is the indication of the circular bifocal circular bifocal is totally indicated preferably indicated i must say in the hyperopic patient hyperopes 
if you want to know the reason uh, you can watch the video i have discussed the link is in the description that which kind of bifocal is comfortable in what kind of patients right so flat top d or d bifocals these type of bifocals are most suitable for the myopic patient right and now this is important the executive bifocal or executive bifocals so executive bifocals are most suitable for the children so the question is that why why we use executive bifocals in children you know very well you can see the shape of the bifocals if you see this one we have a very small portion for the near which is called the segment this is called the main lens this is for the distance this is called main lens this is main lens this is main lens and the specific distance or specific portion for the reading or for the near this is called the segment right this is called the segment this is main lens and this is called the segment right this is main lens this is segment this is main lens this is segment so in executive bifocals or you can say in uh, circular or crypto bifocals you can see the circular portion or near portion is very small right same as in the flat top d the near portion is very small right and but in executive bifocals you can see we have a larger area for the near this whole area is for the near why and why a biggest or longest or greatest area is specified for the executive bifocus or for the near in executive bifocus and why it is used widely used in or only or specifically used in children so these are two different questions why we used executive bifocus in children you know very well the small babies or you can say uh, the children are nothing to do with the driving or watching tv from the distance or uh, they are nothing to do with the file work right they have to play with the toys the bigger toys right so mostly they interact with the near work right they are interacting with the toys right they are interacting with the books with the bigger pictures right so the children are interact with the bigger size near work right the bigger objects at the near right the children have to uh, work at near right he will play his ball the ball has the bigger size right so the children are only interact with the bigger objects right so it means the near work for the children are greater than the distance a small baby is not going in university to take the lectures to make the presentation right he is not going to drive anything so he is nothing to do with mostly he is nothing to do with the distance right he's he will only interact with the near objects and the objects will be in bigger size right if you have children you have experience so that's why we make a larger area for the near a wider area for the near right and the image jump is so very eradicated right in the executive bifocals if you talk about the image jump so i think you are clear with this question that why we used executive bifocals in children right so image jump is you know very well this is main lens main lens main lens segment near segment and near segment right so this is there is a you know very well the specific line is there in the bifocals in every type of bifocals right this is specific line this is specific line this is specific line right so we have specific lines specific distinct lines in every type of bifocals like if you talk about the circular or crypto bifocals we have a visible totally visible line in the spectacles in the glasses of the spectacles right as in as same in the d bifocals right but so that's why due to this difference power difference because in main lens this is for distance so power is different in this section in this main lens for the distance and power is totally different in segment for the near so there is a specific line if you switch from distance to near you have to pass you have to cross this specific line and when you will switch from distance to near 
you have to cross this line and while you are crossing this line there should be there would be a image jump severe image jump right same in this case myopic we have a specific line distinct line we have borderline and when you will switch from distance to near the power would be different in both of these sections so when you will cross when your eye will switch from distance to near your eye will cross this specific borderline and your eye will face a severe image jump right but you know very well in children we uh, specifically prescribe uh, the exacted bifocals and image jump is very very least comparatively if we compare exacted bifocals with these flat top d and crypt talk if we compare both of these uh, uh, bifocals with the exacted bifocals the image jump is very least in this type of bifocals in exacted bifocals why you know very well we have a distance visual point which is totally near to this borderline to this distinct line and we have near visual point as well right so we have distance visual point and near visual point and distance and near visual point are so closed to each other in exact bifocals so that's why due to this reason for being so closed distance visual point and near visual point the image jump will be so reduced right because distance visual point is so close to the near visual point right and but in this case the distance visual point is so far away from the near visual point as you can see in this case and in this case as well the distance visual point is so far away from the distance visual point so the distance between distance and near visual point in exacted bifocals is so closed but in these two cases in cryptoc or in flat top d the distance and near visual point are so far away from each other so due to this this reason the image jump is so much reduced or least in exacted bifocals or image jump is greater in cryptoc or circular bifocals or in flat top d bifocals right uh, i can give you the example if you are uh, standing uh, near to the uh, pond near to the swimming pool and if you throw a stone right far away in the swimming pool right if you throw a stone far away in the swimming swimming pool the splashes will be greater right as in this case because between you and your the place where you are throwing the stone the distance is very great the distance is very high so due to that distance the splashes in the swimming pool will be greater but if you are standing near to the swimming pool and you are throwing a stone near to the near to yourself then the splashes will be least this is a, a funny example you can say so distance visual point and near visual point right both are so close so that's why image jump is least in this case the distance and near visual points are so far away separated from each other so far away so that's why image jump are greater so these these uh, examples are for the image jump right and now we will discuss that how we can reduce this image jump and this image jump can cause the prismatic effect right it can switch your object so how we can reduce this image jump or prismatic effect suppose if your patient is myopic we have a detailed video if your patient is myopic you can prescribe him the flat top d bifocals and if your patient is hyperopic specifically you can prescribe him the crypt top or circular bifocals right and if you have a, a child with loss of accommodation you can prescribe him executive bifocals so by prescribing these types of bifocals in these specific types of refractive errors or age groups you can reduce the image jump and now we will discuss that how we can make the measurements how we can take the measurements if a patient came in your clinic and he is selecting a frame for his bifocals right so which kind of frame will be more suitable for him right you have to choose a frame with a bigger size so we can uh, adjust both distance and near segment in that type of spectacles right 
and uh, the, uh, in this case like if you are prescribing spectacles if you are prescribing progressive addition lenses or you are prescribing uh, the bifocals right the frames or spectacles with the nose pads are most suitable i will tell you the reason and now we will discuss about the segment height and segment width suppose this is again a bifocal right and we have a circular bifocal like this this is a circular bifocal right so segment height segment height is actually from the bottom of the lens from here the distance from bottom of the lens and top of the segment so this height is called a segment height and segment height is most important while we are prescribing the bifocals in measurements right so this is called segment height right and what is segment width segment width is actually from that point from where the near segment is initiating or originating and here where it terminating so that's width is called the segment width so this is segment height from bottom of the lens to the top of the segment this is called segment height segment width from where the one side or one corner of the segment is initiating or originating to the other side to the other corner of the segment where it is terminating so that width is called the segment width so what is the role of the segment height while we are prescribing the progressive addition lenses right so you know very well now we will learn that how we can suppose our patient have chosen a frame a suitable frame for the bifocals right and now we will make the patient to wear his or her glasses and we will take the measurements so you have to take the distance ipd first and what is the uh, procedure that how we can take the best ipd on the spectacles of the patient right or on the glasses of the patient you have to make your patient wear his or her glasses at its most suitable place where he want to or where she wants to wear those glasses right you have to adjust the frame your frame should be well aligned your frame frame should not be disaligned right and your frame should be the nose pads of the frame should be properly aligned according to the nose of the patient you have to choose the frame according to the nose according to the normal anatomy of the patient according to his nose height his nose width and you have to adjust the nose pads according to its anatomical structure of his or her nose right so you have choose a most suitable frame for the patient and now you are going to take ipd right and now you are going to take ipd and what is the most suitable procedure to take ipd in bifocals or distance vision so first we will learn that how we can make how we can measure the ipd how we can mark the interpupillary distance on the spectacles or on the glasses which are chosen by our patient so first of all the eye level should be the same your eye level and the patient's eye level should be the same right you can use a uh, you can say hydraulic chair right or you can if you do not have a hydraulic chair then you can if your patient is heighted and you are small right you can make your patient sit on a chair and you can adjust your height according to his eyes according to his eye level so it means the purpose is the eye level of your and eye level of the patient should be the same right and if you are eye contacting if you have a eye contact with, with your uh, beloved one your right eye is facing her left eye and your left eye is facing her right eye so that's why the eye contact this is called aankhe char karna right and if you are making a uh, four eyes you can say your right eye is facing again your right eye is facing her left eye and your left eye is facing her right eye opposite eyes are facing to each other right so that's why the spark will so, yes so uh, for ipd you will make your observer that is patient you will close your one eye like this and you will ask the patient eye level is same and you will ask the patient that with his both eyes he or she will look in your open eye your right eye is open right and if your right eye is open he or she is looking with his left eye in your right eye straightly my right eye and his left eye is facing 
straight ahead and his fellow eye is converging so i will take the point i will take the measurement i will put my marker at his pupil which is totally facing my eye straightly and which is her or his left eye and again i will make that now i will close this eye and will ask the patient to look in my open eye in my left eye and now his or her right eye is facing my left eye and i will mark the eye of the patient which is totally straight ahead to my left eye and that is his or her right eye right so that's why it would be this phenomena right mostly the, the people make mistakes when they are taking ipds they they say look at here they ask the patient to look at here so patient will converge and that will be a convergent ipd so patient if patient is looking at distance the pd should be like this the eyes should be like this not like this right so this is the proper way to take ipd or intrapupillary distance and now we will discuss that how we can adjust the segment height and now we will learn that as you can see this is flat top d right and this is that spe uh, specific line which is actually differentiating from distance to near right and the question is that where should be that specific line that differentiated line that border line before the patient's eye it should be lie it should lie before the pupil or slightly downward or at the eyelid level or down from the eyelid right so where is the most suitable place for that line before the patient's eye right so the question is it depends on different age groups right suppose this is flat top d and this is circular bifocals and the third one is executive bifocals so we prescribe different type of bifocals in different age groups like these two bifocals are specifically prescribed in adults and this type of bifocal executive bifocal are specifically prescribed in the children right so if, if we are prescribing flat top d circular bifocal in adults then we have to mark the point at the spectacles for this line specifically you make your patient wear the glasses right at its proper adjustment and nose pad adjustment and anatomical adjustment of the patient and you will mark the dot at the level where his or her eyelid is interacting with the spectacles or with the glasses you will mark the point over there and you can make a straight line like this right and at that specific line where you have marked at the spectacles that line of the bifocal should be aligned with that line you have marked on the spectacles right same case is with that so you have to mark at lower eyelid margin for adults i mentioned specifically and if you are marking for the bifocals in children then this line for executive bifocal this line should be aligned with the lower pupil lower side of the pupil right so we have discussed if you are taking measurements in adults like in ftd or in circular bifocals or cryptog you have to mark this line at the level of lower eyelid margin right and if you are taking measurements in children for executive bifocals this line should be aligned with the lower pupil so these are exactly the corrected measurements for the bifocals in every type of bifocals like in cryptog like in ftd and like in the executive bifocals and if you want to learn something new about the bifocals if you have any questions in your mind if you have any queries in your mind you can drop your comments you can drop your questions in comment section and i'll answer and i'll make a, a brief video and i'll make an explanatory video on your concern topic we'll see you in the next videos